Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Favorite Guitar Solos. Today, we have a very, very special guest all the way from Finland, from Red Condition, Voices, multiple solo albums, the leader and founder of Lion Music Records, Mr. Lars Eric Matson. Lars, good morning. Well, good afternoon to you. Good morning for me. Thanks for good joining afternoon. us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, thank you so much for coming. So, uh, so Lars and I have known each other a long, long time. And uh, recently, when I decided to start doing this favorite guitar solo show, I, you know, of course, amass a whole list of different players that I like to cover. And Lars and I were kind of chit chatting recently. And I was like, you know what, I got to get Lars on the show to do one of these with me. And I gave him a list of a couple of them. And he's like, Uli John Roth. So, and I, I want to, I want Lars to tell us why he picked Uli over the other ones that I gave him. And right before we went on the air, he was kind of hinting at that. So Lars, just talk a little bit about Uli and why he was a great choice for you to come on and uh, do the show with me. I think to me, he has been the most influential guitar player and also like musician composer. But, but when I started playing guitar, I was totally hooked on him. Like, wow, this was... I mean, there were other players like Michael Schenker, but Uli was always in his own league for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, those early Scorpions albums and even those early uh, Uli John Roth solo albums, you know, with the whole, uh, was it the Earthquake Band? Is that what uh, he actually called that band? Uh, yes. That's, that's some pretty amazing playing on those albums. Absolutely. And um, uh, I discovered Uli through the Tokyo tapes because I hadn't heard so much of him before. But, but then I was just listening to this. And then I had a friend who was studying in the States and he came back with uh, the Earthquake album. And I remember we were playing this in the night. And yeah. it was, wow. <laughs> Great stuff, I know, I know. Yeah. So I've asked Lars to put together his favorite 10 guitar solos from Uli John Roth. If you have some honorable mentions at the end, that's great too. Uh, and you know, I basically tell everybody, it's like you can pick studio, live, whatever, anything that uh, the player that we're talking about has recorded on is fair game here. So I'm gonna have Lars kick us off with his number 10. My number 10, well, I would say Starlight from uh, uh, the Sky of Avalon album. That's a good one. Wow. Okay. Very cool. So let me, so let me ask you now that, so that's your, that's your first choice. So do you, would you rather hear Uli playing on a Strat or on the Sky guitar? Which do you prefer or do you not care? Uh, maybe on the Strat in, in a way, because it's like, then you get this Hendrix influence that he has and yeah. Yeah. I think with the, with the Sky guitar, it's much cleaner. And yes. it has like this, um, yeah, I think the Strat, obviously you mentioned the Hendrix influence, which is undeniable. Yes. I think when he was playing the Strat, uh, he, it was more of a funky tone, a lot of a uh, little bit of fuzz and feedback he would use back in the day, which he doesn't really do that much anymore. I just think the, the Sky guitar, much more beautiful sound, I think. He is, yeah. and he is a better guitar player now than he was before, yeah. but... Uh, I mean, it was good enough before. I know. I <laughs> he know. was what? actually in my hometown. We are like 10,000 people living here. He was playing with his band three years ago here for maybe 100 in the audience. <laughs> very, very small gig. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I've seen Uli live a few times and uh, I will never forget. So the night uh, of my bachelor party before I got married. Yes. Uh, it's funny because all my friends and my brother and everybody are like, all right, we, you know, we want to take you out for your bachelor party. We're going to have a good time. Is there something you really want to do? And I said, well, Uli John Roth is playing in New York City the night of my bachelor party. That's what I want to do. And that's, <laughs> that's what we did. And I got to meet him. And it was, I'll never forget it. Never forget Yeah, he's it. a cool guy. He is. He's really, really nice. And, yes. and the, the show was amazing. And I had seen him a couple of times since then. But yeah, it's a shame, like a man of this, uh, these talents, like, you go to see him at a club or whatever. And, you know, it's not like going to see the Scorpions, right? With thousands no. of people, unfortunately. But uh, well, that's a good choice. Uh, my number yeah. 10, I'm going to go to the Entrance album for uh, Dark Lady. Yeah, that's a cool one also. 
Yeah. Um, I, I, you know what I like a lot about some of the Scorpion stuff that he did is like he would mix in these like classical lines and then go crazy with the whammy bar and do all this, you know, with the feedback and the funky lines and the Hendrix stuff, the bluesy things. And I, I know that solo is a great mix of both worlds, you know, his classical leaning and his more blues and rock based stuff. So yeah. uh, love Dark Lady. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a mix of like blues stuff. Yeah. With uh, the thing that would come later. Exactly. Yep, exactly. Yeah. All right, you're number nine. <clears throat> Okay, so I would say from um, from Tokyo tapes, we'll burn the sky. Yeah, it's got to be <clears throat> got to be on the list, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, that's a it's uh, a great solo. Maybe not. I, I'm not really sure about the order of these songs. I'm just. But... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did, Lars? I, I put together a huge list at first and I'm like, all right, which ones are going to go into the top 10? Then I, I couldn't decide what order because it almost like it doesn't matter. They're all great, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Wheel Burn the Sky is great. Um, <clears throat> it's great on the studio album and arguably even better on the live album. I think so. Yeah, yeah. that's a good choice. We'll talk more about that in a couple minutes. <laughs> um, my number nine is uh, Electric Sun off the Earthquake album. And I, yeah. I like that. That's a, it's a great album. And I think a lot of people probably haven't heard those, uh, those earthquake albums, you know, those yeah. kind of fire wind and earthquake. Those are, those are great, great albums. <clears throat> and I think that um, this song for me, it's almost like it captures the band of gypsies sound. It's really funky. Uh, and then he uh, it is. Like, it can be really funky, right? Absolutely, it is really. Yeah, that song was on my list, but I, it was like contestant for being on the list. <laughs> I know I had a lot of songs that got kicked off my list. I'm like, oh, but I think I like this one better. But, uh, but it's it's a great song, and I love how he goes into this kind of like neoclassical shred. Yes, uh, solo, which I mean, at the time nobody was doing that. That was absolutely so way yes. ahead of the time. I think uh, many of these things that Ingrid Malmsteen has been playing come from Uli, actually. Right. And does he ever actually acknowledge that? Never. Know. Never. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with Ingve is like, <clears throat> other than maybe Hendrix and Blackmore, he rarely ever talks about his influences or gives his influences any credit. But yet then he went and did that, so that solo album <clears throat> where he did all sorts of covers. And you know by the covers that he did, who were the guys where they, they were important to him. And of course, oh, yeah. <laughs> did, he, did he do Sales of Sharon on that? I don't remember exactly what song it was. Anyway, he did a Scorpion song on that, and he, he did yeah. it very well. But yeah, yeah, I think Ingve needs to acknowledge that, you know, he's <laughs> one of the guys that started all this. But anyway, yeah. back to you for number eight. <clears throat> okay, so for number eight, then I would choose... Uh, Still so many lives away from Earthquake. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, that's a great album, right? It, it is. Uh, I think um, if I can give my assessment of those, of most of his solo albums, especially the early ones, most people don't like his vocals. <clears throat> I know that. Understandably, <laughs> right? I think that Uli, if, when he left the Scorpions, if he would have formed like a band that had a really good lead singer and you know did the style that he did, I think things would have been much different. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, his vocals were kind of, I, I don't dislike them personally because I got so used to them from the early Scorpions days that I, I, I don't I know. know why, but he's not, he's not a very good singer. I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great song and a great solo. A great yeah, very, very melodic. I, I, like, I like his melodic style. Yeah. Because it's not just flash, it's like. Right. Such a tasty player. So good. Yeah. Uh, my number eight, I'm going to go to the Virgin Killer album for a uh, pictured life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, uh, he w played Wawa. I think he was a crybaby guy. And um, there's a little light Wawa on that particular solo. Then you got, he, he's really good at these like little speedy flutters that go throughout that whole song. And it's just got a really good vibe. And more importantly, it's very memorable. And I it think uh, that's another, you know, in doing shows like this, we often talk about these great players who would pay a lot of attention 
and put a lot of thought behind the solos for these songs. And those solos become like little mini songs within they the They are, they are, yes. Right? I and agree. if you can make a solo memorable where people remember all the notes and can actually hear it in their head, as opposed to yeah. someone who just plays a million notes and it doesn't really say anything, uh, Uli's solos always say totally something. Totally agree. Yeah, they always say it's so like you I, know, I used to play play this that one and uh, in trance in cover bands, but it was like 1981 to something like that. <laughs> a long time ago. So what but was it like? Two, That's a deviant. What was it like in a cover band trying to replicate these songs? Never, nobody had ever heard these songs, <laughs> so they thought they were like original compositions. <laughs> <laughs> And, and nowadays, forget it. Now everybody knows these classics. These yes, yes, yes. Classic songs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. What do you got for number seven, Lars? Uh, okay. For number seven, I will go for Why from uh, Beyond the Astral Skies. It's uh, a, one of, another very, very beautiful, like, ballad, very, yeah. very, like, tasteful playing. Good stuff. That's a good choice. Yeah, you're, you're coming up with some really good ones. Really good. I, I think the melodic uh, stuff uh, sticks in my head. Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with that because he can do yeah. that style very, very well. Yeah, and it, it, may, it might sound simple, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing's nothing simple with him, right? <laughs> no, no, no. All right, my number seven, I'm going to go to the Entrance album, uh, Sun in My Hand. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I personally love when he kind of goes and does that kind of Jimi Hendrix sort of thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> right? I mean, and that, that whole song seems like an homage to like, uh, you know, Axis Bold is Love or Electric Ladyland. It's got yeah. very psychedelic. Um, you know, the main solo, he's doing these, you know, crazy whammy bar things. And then he's uh, doubling the solo in octaves, right? Really, really cool. It's just absolutely wild. I love the whole freaky vibe of that song. Because, I mean, I think at his heart, Uli was a hippie, right? I mean... Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... Who, Uli was never like a metal guy. He's, Uli's no, a, no, no, no. He's a hippie. So, yeah. uh, and that, I think that song, and again, you know, somebody, somebody, a lot of people, when they look back on the old Scorpions, especially people who were turned on to the Scorpions in the 80s uh, when Matthias was in the band, the more yes. stuff, they listened to some of those 70s albums and they're, it's kind of weird for them, but I love the vibe of the 70s. Yeah. Album, you know, <laughs> and I think he brought such a, a nice element to the band. So. That was a really good choice for you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a great <laughs> song. Really good song. Yeah. So, all right, number six, what do you got? Okay, number six. Then I would choose uh, Catch Your Train from Virgin Killer. Yeah. Great. I will tell you that one was in and out of my list like five times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good, right? Yeah. So good. I, I mean, that's like, um, that's like a perfect example of how to play pentatonic scales really fast, really well. Yeah. Yeah. Make it memorable. Great choice and a great yeah. song. Great song. All right. My number six. How about the title track to Earthquake? That one I have on my list too. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> and you know, sometimes it's it's hard when you're doing a, a list like this to put an instrumental song because the whole song is basically comprised of solos. But yes, it's so good. I yeah. uh, I posted a link to this video because there's a live video of them playing this on my face on the Sea Tranquility Facebook page last night. And so many people had never heard the song before and absolutely loved it. And they were like, "This is like mind blowing." I'm like. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I, 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 but the first time you hear it, you don't really understand everything that's in it. Yeah, it's amazing playing. And, and yeah. that, that was actually a really, really tight band. So yes. uh, yeah, Earthquake, my number six. Back to you for number five. Yeah, okay. Uh, I have Earthquake on my li list, so, and I'm not sure about the order. So uh, we, we just, uh, <laughs> I, I choose that one also. So then you Number can... five for you, there you go. <laughs> yeah it's a great choice you know it's funny when i first started um putting my list together 
uh, originally it was mostly Scorpion songs. And I'm like, oh man, you know, I gotta, I have to put some of the, the earthquake stuff on here. And then I started re-listening because I haven't, I haven't actually haven't listened to these albums in a long time. And yeah. I was like, oh man, this stuff is so great. Uh, and I, I've forgotten how awesome some of the playing is on these albums. So that's why, and my number five is from the Firewind album, uh, Enola Gay, Hiroshima Today. I mean, that's- Yeah, okay. That's we it. have another one that we both have on our list. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, that is fantastic. And it's like, and here you get also this Hendrix vibe. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's just, um, it's. I love when he does, like you said, this bluesy Hendrix psychedelic kind of thing. And then, you know, he is like one of the masters of using the whammy bar. I mean, it's like, you know, people talk yeah. about, you know, uh, the, you know, Eddie Van Halen and Randy Rhodes and, and all those guys who are amazing too. But this guy was kind of doing some crazy stuff to kind of take doing what Hendrix did, taking it a little bit further. And then, you know, Absolutely. Yes. screaming solos. And yeah. I think for, um, for folks who love like Fly to the Rainbow, which is another, especially from Tokyo. Tate, yeah, yeah. I think they'll love Enola Gay because it's like a 10 minute long song and he just goes off into all these crazy places in the last like three, four minutes of the song. It's just absolutely yeah, it, it, incredible. I think it's absolutely outstanding. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super, super good. Yep. All right, back to you. So uh, I also have the Firewind title track because I think it's a very beautiful solo. Uh, and there, there he, he has the, a lot of these arpeggios that... Uh, later became neoclassical. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the foundation. Yeah, he was so ahead of his time. So ahead yeah. of his time. That's a good choice. Um, my number four, We'll Burn the Sky. From either, either from Taken by Force or from Tokyo Tapes, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it's, it's, it, but it's a great, great track. It's great. And again, that's neoclassical shred years before it became like a common yeah. thing, right? Just absolutely. And with taste. Yeah. With taste. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. All right, number three, back to you. Uh, Eleison from Beyond the Astral Skies. Oh, nice. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's a really good I really, one. really like that song also. You know, yeah. it's, uh... that, that is like majestic. Yes. Yeah, that's a good choice. Good choice. And, and it's like, uh, the whole song is like super, super or original, very progressive. Yes. But it's very far away from the, the first Scorpion stuff. Yeah. Well, a lot of his latter period stuff <clears throat> is very progressive and orchestral. I mean, he's, but he's doing is. some really amazing stuff in, in the yes. later years. Yes. Great choice. All right, my number three, gonna go to the Tokyo Tapes album for a song I just mentioned, uh, Fly to the Rainbow. Uh, I think that the live version is like leagues better than the studio version, which is great too. But the live yeah. version, I mean, that whole middle section where he's playing these kind of like Hendrix notes and he's like kind of whispering vocals, you know, he takes over from Klaus. I mean, that whole section is his. And then, you know, his Stratocaster is absolutely crying. And then the whammy bar is going crazy. And then the whole outro is him doing these crazy dive bombs and explosions with the, on the Strat, which to me almost sounds like his extension of Jimmy's machine gun in a weird way. Yeah, I know what you mean. And, uh, and I went and listened to it last night on headphones. And it's crazy how at the end of the song when he's doing... And you're hearing the panning left and right, left and right. From the <laughs> Unbelievable. And, you know, when I was a kid, Lars, I used to listen to the, that album and specifically that song in my room, on my stereo, blasting loud beyond belief. And I would just sit right in front of the speakers and I'd be like... The live version. Yeah, the live version. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, this yeah. is like the greatest shit ever. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so good. So good. All right, so the top two, here we go. So I'm, I'm wondering how similar we might be here. So what's your number two? Uh, I think uh, I had something with, across something because you had it also. It was, maybe it was this Hiroshima that we both had and then we'll burn the sky. There you go. So uh, I, I, I have only one left from them. <laughs> That's fine. What do you got? I have only one of, of 10 songs. I have only one left. Okay. 
because I have Hiroshima, Firewind, Elason, Y, Starlight, Steal So Many Lives Away, uh, Catch your, your Train, We'll Burn the Sky, the live version. And I have only Sales on Sharon left. Okay. Oh, there you go. Well, that's my number two also. <laughs> okay. Well, we can we can duplicate them. That's not a big deal. So yeah. uh, I mean, Sales of Sharon is just classic. And I... I almost, it's almost like it's cliche to say, well, that's his best, right? And I almost like, I didn't want to say that because I think I have one I like a little bit more, but Sales of Sharon yeah. is just. It's hard to say his best, but at that time, there was nothing like it. There was nothing like it, right? Yeah. I think, I think people still listen to that song and think, my God, this guy was like from another planet, right? The solos are so well constructed. And it's, you know, some people, when they play fast, they just play fast all the time. But this is so tasteful it's yeah that's yeah. crazy it's crazy good it, it's yeah. probably arguably his signature song yes say. yeah so what do you have left uh my number one is from tokyo tapes and it's another one of those just it's just a devastating song for me uh polar nights from polar tokyo. nights yes 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 yeah i mean you know the opening solo is all about jimmy it's yeah. lots of funk. And then the ending solo, again, is just like, it's from another planet. He's doing yeah. all incredible, you know, whammy bar dives and just screaming notes. I mean, just like, you know, bordering on feedback. And it's just like, I don't think anybody ever did that like that since Jimmy died. And it's just, um, it's just uh, his tone on that whole live album is just absolutely. I agree, I agree. I think it's like, Maybe maybe the best live album ever, or but I like Made in Japan also. So these two are like. <laughs> I, I mean, Lars, I have said for many many years that some of my favorite live albums is Made in Japan, um, Tokyo Tapes, Strangers in the Night, UFO. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, those three right there are like doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, <laughs> and that's like 40, year, 40 plus years ago. Yeah, a long time ago. But I mean, it's like if you're, a, if you're a, a fan of guitar rock, hard rock guitar, and loved guitar players in the 70s, I mean, it doesn't get much better than Blackmore on that album, Shanker on the other album, and Roth on this album. It, it's done. Yeah. It doesn't. <clears throat> you have any honorable mentions you want to throw out there? I don't know, but I am. I, like from, from the early days, I mean, songs like uh, In Trance, they are also very, very well constructed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's so many great ones. Uh, yeah. I mean, you mentioned Catch Your Train. I had that on my list. Uh, Hellcat is a really cool song. Hellcat is cool, yes. Now, do you know, because I was listening to that again last night. I'm like, is, is he playing that through a wah wah or is he using an envelope filter on that? I don't know. Yeah, it, it doesn't really sound like a wah wah. Yeah, it's got to be an envelope filter then, because I know like yeah, Frank something. Zappa was using a similar type of technique. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, Virgin Killer solo is great. Yes, um, yes. How about Longing for Fire? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Very lyrical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other one that was actually in my top 10 originally, and I it got kicked out for something else, uh, Cast Away Your Chains from Firewind. Yeah, yeah, that whole album is also great. And, and uh, I'll Be Loving You Always is another ballad that I love. Yes, yes, that's another one. That's a, yeah, I mean, so many great. And you know, it's funny, some of the songs on the Firewind album are really hooky and very melodic. And I just, if he would have gotten like a regular lead singer, yes. I think that album would have sold pretty well, I think. Glenn Hughes on that album. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> That would have been. <laughs> oh, that would have been amazing. Yeah, I, I would. I would love to hear those two guys working together. But yeah. Oh man, cool. Well, there you have it, everybody. Uh, some favorite Uli John Roth guitar solos. There's so many. I mean, we could have done a list of fifty, and it wouldn't have been enough, right? Uh, <laughs> I know. I mean, it's not a bad one, right? And, and I couldn't really choose like uh, which is the best, or I just chose ten songs that, or I had more, but I. I it's hard. I mean, I think to me, when I put these lists together, it's like, which of the solos speak to me the most? The yes. ones that to me are the most memorable, that are the most impressive, because it's, you know, 
what is best. I mean, there's, it's hard yeah. to, you know, it's all what we hear here. So uh, to me, and I've been listening to this guy for so long, it's just like, I tried to first thing, all right, well, which ones automatically have to go on my list? So for me, like, you know, Sales of Sharon, Polar Nights, Fly to the Rainbow, you know, those automatically on the list. Then I had to yes. go and re-listen to all of them and say, well, which ones just really impress me and really speak to me the most? And then, you know, before you know it, my list is 20. And then I'm like, all right, now I have to pick which ones. So yes. and I, I do want to mention for folks who are watching who maybe haven't heard the Earthquake albums, uh, and I, I'm assuming you can still get this, but this is the uh, Uli John Roth three CD collection, which actually contains uh, Sky of Avalon, as well as the, uh, the Earthquake. Yeah and the uh, Firewind albums. Must hear. If you haven't heard these, you gotta get them. Uh, and for everybody else, you know, you got Taken by Force, Tokyo Tapes, and uh, I have this uh, cool box set which has In Trance Virgin Killer with the terrible cover and Flax of the Rainbow <laughs> on it. So uh, all mandatory, Uli. And then he's got other more recent albums, you know, featuring the Sky Guitar with the new Symphonia Orchestra and, uh, you know, the... Yeah covering the scorpions classics and all that kind of stuff so there's there's so much great Uli john roth music out there i urge everybody to check it out uh so before we let him go i want lars to give us some updates on what's going on on the lion music label any new releases you want to talk about and things like that uh, we're having uh, we're going to release a new album by vitaly Kupri with a lot of guitar players and it's absolutely fantastic music wow. it's very very progressive it's i would say the instrumental keyboard-based album of the year. I, I know another keyboard star has more famous guitar players on his album, but Vitaly has the music. Okay, cool. So, all right. So we, I think everybody knows who, who uh, Lars is talking about there. Yeah, uh, Vitaly say, used to be in uh, Our Tension. I don't even know if Our Tension yes, is. Yes, yes. Uh, and he's also played with Trans-Siberian Orchestra. So could you name a couple of the players that are guesting on his album? Uh, Michael Harris. He's on it, and uh, Roger Staffelbach from uh, Attention. Yep. And, and then there are some some other guys who has played with Trans Siberian Orchestra. Okay, but I'm, I'm assuming one of them really, is my friend really, really who lives. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really, really, really good album, and it's you know it's not based on you know shred or something. It's very, very high quality music. Nice. When is that coming up? In December. Oh wow! Right, right around the holidays. Good. Yes. Yes. Cool, excellent. So we will do vinyl also, limited. Excellent. Wow, looking forward to that. That should be good. Yeah, he's he's such a great player. Yeah, he is. Great player. And he's been working on this album for like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. We're looking forward to that. So uh, a lot of great releases on uh, Lion, and uh, I think we've had some Lars uh, stuff that has come out as well. We have uh, some of your solo albums have been uh, what reissued and put out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, this is things I always wanted to do, but now I'm, now I'm done with this. Now I leave this behind me. <laughs> I leave the past behind me now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So everybody go over to the Lion Music website and check out all the news about all the new releases that are coming out. Uh, most of them are available digitally, CD, and occasionally on vinyl. So go check those yes. out. Uh, in fact, also my good friend uh, Jim Ledford also is working on a new release for Lion Music. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a great, great player also. Yeah, yeah, I love Jim. Player. Jim is very great. nice guy. Yeah, he is. He totally is. So uh, yeah. he's, a, he's a local guy. So yeah, we got we got Jim Ledford, we got Chris Caffrey, we got Jeff Young, all these local guys here. So it's, uh, it's all great. right. A lot of great players. <laughs> That's so. very cool. <laughs> So again, I want to thank uh, Lars Eric Matson for joining us here today on this wonderful discussion about the great guitar solos from Uli John Roth. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. For Lars Eric Matson, I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you all real soon. Lars, thanks again for joining. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye, okay, everybody. Bye-bye.